Hello, I'm Fred Opelinski, pastor at Trinity Lutheran Church in downtown Reading, and I'm delighted that you're watching this broadcast today. We're pleased that today's broadcast is being sponsored, and we invite you to consider supporting this ministry. You can make a contribution online through our website or mail a contribution to the church. Either way, we are very much appreciative of your viewing and your support. God bless you. Hello, I'm Pastor Fred Opelinski at, from Trinity Lutheran Church in downtown Reading, and I'm delighted to welcome you to this broadcast of our Sunday morning worship. I'm standing here on the portico of our church, Washington Street behind me, uh, as a way of illustrating what today's gospel is about. Some folks think that faith is about our relationship to God, and that's it, period. Jesus calls us today salt of the earth and the light of the world. It's his way of saying that the job of faith is to permeate our daily life wherever we might find ourselves. May that love of God be yours and work through you to be a blessing to the world.
Lord God. With endless mercy, you receive the prayers of all who call upon you. By your Spirit, show us the things we ought to do and give us the grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to the whole house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Trust you've gotten the theme by now. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Those familiar passages took unexpected turns this past week as salt shortages at the big box stores leave us with an icy sidewalk in front of our house. And as over half a million Pennsylvanians, even 50,000 yet today, suffer without power after that fierce ice storm slammed us. Interesting, isn't it, how salt and light suddenly become far more precious than usual for a lot of folks. Okay, Lord, you made your points. 
We'll sit up and take notice. So let's do it, shall we? As you probably know, salt was indeed a valuable commodity in Jesus' day and for a long time afterwards. Even up to our colonial days here in the United in the States, salt sellers regularly had locks on them because the stuff was so valuable. Go to a gourmet shop and check out the French flake sea salt and get an idea of how pricey the stuff can really be. Before the days of refrigeration, of course, salt was used for food preservation, especially for fish and meats. Salt was an antiseptic for wounds. We still use it today, mixed with warm water as a gargle for sore throats. But most basic of all was, is salt as a flavor enhancer. Scientists tell us it works like this. Dissolved salt opens up the cell membranes of the food in order to release the aroma and flavor molecules, giving our senses an extra boost of what it means to be meat or stew or veggies. So think about it. You are the salt of the world, declares Jesus. What's he getting at? It's interesting, I think, that 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 charge comes right after the Beatitudes in the Sermon on the Mount. Remember all of those blesseds and happies about believers in various circumstances of life. Blessed are the poor, the hungry, the merciful, the peacemakers. Blessed are, notice, present tense. And then he comes, you are the salt of the earth. That tense continues. Jesus doesn't say God wants you to be salt or he invites you to consider it. Or Jesus doesn't offer a five-step program on how to become more salty. He simply says, you are salt. I don't know how that image might grab you, but for me, I think about this church being one giant salt cellar unlocked so that when you leave here each, each week, that salt pours out its doors. Some of it perhaps goes to melt the ice, but most of it goes out there to permeate the stew of this city and of your daily lives. That salt goes out to release the aromas and the flavors to nourish and delight the world. So how does it grab you? Okay, if you're on a reduced salt diet, then think of yourself as minced garlic or a chili pepper, kicking it up a notch, as Emeril likes to say, especially if you're from Bowers. But keep that mission in mind. You know what it's like to taste a really wonderful dish, maybe something from our chili cook-off, how it is to put into your mouth that spoonful of bursting flavor, that rich blend of ingredients, herbs, spices, brought to life by just the right kiss of salt. That's our job, dear friends. We'll come back to the salt in a minute. Let's take a look at the light for a moment, especially since we've been singing about it. We've all experienced power outages, right? We know the difference that a single candle flame or a flashlight can make, the difference between finding your way or stubbing your toes or falling down the stairs. Like salt, Light was a particularly precious thing back in the pre-Edison days. In Jesus' time, as you probably know, they relied on olive oil to fuel the wicks of their lamps. That oil was expensive to begin with, and getting it lit was not easy. If your fire went out, you had to borrow a flame from the neighbor or rub two sticks together and hope for the best. Throughout history, and in many places today. The dark is a fearsome and dangerous thing. 
The light is welcome to chase the bad stuff away. We know what that's like, particularly in our house on Eckerd Avenue. When we moved to Reading, there were no street lights in the entire block. And in the first year, our car was broken into three times. Put out a plea to the city council, nothing happened. And then I got a hold of Tom McMahon. And he ordered a street light to be placed in front of our house. And in these last nine years, with that light, nothing has happened. You know what it's like to welcome the light. The longer days of spring are on their way. Summer is welcomed with celebration and feasting. The sun returns to break winter's deadly grip. As for Christians, the risen sun conquers the darkness of death. All of that comes together when Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Again, present tense declaration. And then comes the verse that we hear every time we've got a baptism. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Did you hear that? Jesus is telling us there's work to be done. Faith is not just a quiet little cozy relationship with the Lord, just you and me, God. Faith is rather God's gift to us to bring light through us to every corner of the world, down those dark streets of Reading, chasing the shadows where people cower in fear. That light goes into the hearts of hopelessness or despair to bring light and new life. Once again, it brings to mind the reality of this building here at 6th and Washington. You've all seen that steeple light at night. It is an awesome beacon against a cold black sky. Like salt, Christ calls us to be the warmth of that light going with us wherever each day takes us. You know the expression, when she walks into a room, the whole place brightens up? Imagine what that might mean for us leaving this place, taking that light. Not as light wannabes, but as the real thing. Reflecting the presence of Jesus in every time and place, that light that darkness cannot overcome source of life abundant and love eternal. That's what we bring. There is such work to be done. Flavorless salt is worthless, says Jesus. It gets thrown out and trampled underfoot. Likewise, the light under a bushel is just plain silly, especially when the world is so desperate, dying for both those gifts. God's word is even sharper in that first reading. Did you catch it? You probably know the story. The Israelites had been conquered by the Babylonians. Jerusalem and the temple lay in ruins. Her leaders were carried off into exile where they languished for decades. But by this 58th chapter of Isaiah, they've returned home by God's hand. But what they discover is that the place is a mess. The rubble of battle, painful reminders of what used to be are all around them. And so in these opening verses of the chapter, they whine. We do all this praying, but the Lord doesn't seem to listen. We do all this fasting, but the Lord doesn't seem to care. And then as you heard, the Lord God Almighty lets them have it. Is this what I'm looking for? To have you fast and bow down like a bulrush, dress in sackcloth, lie around in the ashes? What's the point? The fast that I want, says the Lord, is for you to loose the bonds of injustice, to remove the yoke of oppression, to share your bread with the hungry, to provide shelter for the homeless, clothing for those who have none. 
Then, get this, then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your gloom be like noonday. Then, think Reading, then your ruin shall be rebuilt. You shall be called repairers of what is broken, restorers of streets to live in. Do you see what's going on about our mission? God has placed this congregation in the heart of this city, not just for the sake of us who venture inside from time to time. Rather, God has put us here and Christ comes to us so that through us, far and wide, others may come to know that light and love of God. Salt and light are not created for themselves. That salt dissolves, giving itself away to make the most of the food that it seasons. Likewise, that lamp oil or candle is used up for the sake of what surrounds it, reflecting that light. So tutoring and educational support, food pantries, winter cafe, Habitat for Humanity, Family Promise, Opportunity House, hospitality to the stranger, immigration issues, job creation, health care, are not things that are incidental to our faith. They are absolutely essential. They are what it means to be people of God, people who belong to Jesus, what it means to be salt and light. They are at the very heart of our reality, of our call, because they weigh so heavy on the heart of God. You heard it. Dear brothers and sisters, as we look to the year ahead, with Vision 2020 work still to accomplish and so many other decisions to make. I pray that the call to live as God has made us will energize and guide us. Salt for the earth, we are. Light of the world, we are. This is no time to be timid. Oh, shucks, what can I do? What difference can we make? because we are the body of Christ, remember. God creates us in him to do great things. Let your light so shine before others that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Eugene Peterson's translation of that verse may help a bit. Keep open house, he writes. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt them to open up to God, the generous Father of heaven. So, let's live tasty and dazzling lives. Amen.
Guided by the light of Christ, who has been made known to the nations, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. Your light springs forth like the dawn. Call your church to share the mystery of your grace with a broken and searching world. We pray for our covenant partners at Christ Episcopal Church and for Father John, for the people of Trinity Deaf and Dee and Pastor Rick, and for the congregation and staff of Christ Lutheran Church in Stouchburg. Lord, in your mercy. Increase our care for the earth and all its creatures. Help us reflect your light in our use of these good gifts. Lord, in your mercy. You care for the weak and the strong, O God. Raise up leaders who will free the oppressed in all places, especially in Central Africa and the Middle East. Lord, in your mercy. Quickly send your healing for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially for Jan Rita Clemison, Nan Potiger, Bill Davidson, Brian Trupp, Joan Hinkle, Pat Livenspire, Tom Spatz, Rodney and Dorothy Gudekunz, David Schrum, Beth Evans, Andrea Ramsey, Bill Levan, Anne Harnish, Frank Nagel, Judy Crick, Ralph Reeves, Kathy Manning, Ruth, Ruth Stoiko, Gloria Keffer, Marie Zeckman, Jeremiah Motley, Virginia Achenbach, and those others we now name. Feed the hungry and shelter the homeless. Lord, in your mercy. Give light and life to this gathering of faith that we may delight to know your ways and share them with a world longing to know you. We pray for our recitals this week, for our vestry meeting tomorrow, and for our winter cafe on Friday. Bless also the sisters and brothers whom we lift in prayer this week. Chris Kaufman, Gloria Keffer, Barbara Kellum, Beverly Kennedy, and Ed Kirshner. Lord, in your mercy. Satisfy our needs until we gather with all your saints from every time and place in your glorious light. Lord, in your mercy. Radiant God, hear the prayers of your people spoken and silent for the sake of the one who made his dwelling among us your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
everyone. I'm Marian Jameson. I'm a longtime member of Trinity Lutheran Church. And uh, I'm in charge of the courtyard and winter cafes here at Trinity. Uh, we hold the cafes, the summer cafes, once a month, May through September. And the winter cafe is during January and February. Uh, in winter cafe, we serve soups and sandwiches, something to warm them up and a little, a few other things. Uh, the summer cafe is generally grilling hot dogs, burgers in the courtyard with a picnic lunch. Most of the food is donated by our members and volunteers and uh, sometimes people donate money because they want to be a part of the cafe but they are unable to be here with us. Our guests are served by our volunteers. I never have trouble getting volunteers. Everyone loves to do this. Uh, our pastor is always here, and we have a Latino pastor who comes in to speak Spanish with those our guests who are unable to speak English. Um, our nurses do blood pressures when they are available, and um, we usually have Bibles to hand out to our, our guests. Uh, we want you to, our neighbors to know that this is a safe place to be, and we want them to feel that we care, and also that we are doing God's work. God's work our hands. Blessed to be a blessing.